Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Jalen Harris. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Backstage with Becca B. On this episode, this Memphis native could be seen on season 10 of American Idol where he made it to the top 50. He was on the national tour of Disney's The Lion King where he understudied Simba before eventually becoming the lead Simba on tour. And he currently plays Eddie Kendricks on the national tour of Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. Please welcome Jalen Harris. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good, I'm good. I love the shirt. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was actually uh, my mom's brother and he, he he gave it to me. This is from like the 80s. It's like a real life vintage check. <laughs> I, I mean, I could tell and it's like, it's super cool. Yes, thank you, thank you. Whoa, so how how are you? How have you been doing lately? Oh, it's, I, I'm doing amazing. Uh, being in Detroit has been just, uh, a collection of emotions. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, we just finished our first week here. We'll be here for three weeks. And, um, you know, our first week felt like just an entire year almost. I started on Monday meeting Smokey Robinson. And, you know, yesterday oh. we had our eighth show for a packed out house. It's just been awesome. And it, it's so nice to just bring the story to the place where it was born. So, I mean, I'm sure Detroit audiences are loving it so much. It's it's, it's been awesome, and it's it's awesome to hear like everyone singing the songs because they know them, you know, yeah. and like they know them great. So it's funny to hear their reactions, and you know, I love it. I love yeah. it. Detroit people here are just amazing. Let's talk about that too. Everybody's so nice and kind. I love it. Yes, and I'm gonna get more in to Ain't Too Proud later in this interview. But first, I want to go back to like, did you always know growing up that you wanted to have a career in acting and performing and entertaining on stage? Um, kind of, sort of, yes. I I started very early. I was in preschool. Um, the first time I sang in front of an audience. Um, and my teacher at the time she had you know told my parents about it it was like she was kind of like seeing what I could do before she was going to tell them and um I sang at my preschool graduation ever since then it's been <laughs> you know everything, you know even my t-ball games I would be singing the national anthem and it just you know it grew into um this lifelong uh uh, uh, pursue of passion and it turned into my career and here we are many years later. <laughs> oh, I know that singing at that preschool graduation at the time was probably a huge deal. I, but, from, I vaguely remember, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, it was probably like all, all the relatives coming, like all the cameras out, all the like old school cameras out. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yes, yes. I that was like huge video cameras that used to follow me around. As a kid. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like you gotta spin the little thingy after you take one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something like that. And I like always tried to get in front of the camera, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. was I was a crazy kid. <laughs> so, what was the first theater show that you ever saw when you realized, hey, like I kind of want to do that on stage? Um, it was, I think I may have been in middle school. My mom, she took me to see Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at the Orpheum Theater in Memphis, Tennessee. And um, it like, it was just, I was in total awe. You know, I had done a couple of plays before, but I had never seen a full Broadway production on stage. And at the time, you know, those artists were touring and I had no clue what touring was. So... Um, it, that was, I think when it clicked for me that like, wow, I think that's something I might want to do one day. You're like, these people get to tour and perform for a living? What? Right. Sign me up immediately. <laughs> yes. Like I, I gotta do this. So right. I read you auditioned for American Idol when you were 15 years old. Yeah. And 
I mean, you're still like a baby at 15. What made you want to audition for American Idol? What, like, did you go up watching the show and you were like, I'm going to go and try this out and see what the judges say and see how far I can go? Well, I definitely grew up watching the show. And um, I think season one, when um, Kelly Clarkson won the show, I was maybe like six years old. And at the time, and, and it was like, it was a big family thing. Like my family loved watching the show. But at the time we knew I couldn't go on there until I was 16. So yeah. fast, nine years later, they dropped the age to 15. And my mom, she called me, she heard it on the radio. She's like, oh my God, they dropped the age to 15. You're going to audition. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And I was like, what, are y'all making me do this? Like, why I, I don't, uh, why do I have to do it? And she's like, you've been waiting your whole life to do this. You're going to do it. So they, they really pushed me into auditioning. And my dad, he went to Nashville with me. We had left Memphis. And um, I went through all these rounds of auditions. And next thing I knew, I was in Los Angeles on a stage with a million cameras everywhere with Jim. Lopez looking at me dead in the face. <laughs> yeah, what is that experience like for like for a fifteen year old being like it's it's a very produced show, so like it's not like live where there's just like one like three cameras switching off and they're like here go to this camera you mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like a little like script that they have yeah. almost. I, I learned so much at that time. And, you know, like you were saying, I was only 15. I was in 10th grade, uh, having to like figure out how to do my schoolwork and be That's on it. hours a day. You know, it was it was definitely a, a major learning experience for me and my mom. She I had to have a guardian with me because I was under 18. So um, it was very overwhelming. It was, you know, long days that I had never experienced before. Um, my eyes were open to uh, the uh, production industry as a whole and, and how the, the support of, of entertainment industry as well. Um, and, and learning things fast. I really had to learn, learn fast and uh, retain information quickly at a very young age. And, I, and I'm mostly thinking about what's for dinner and you know what kind of video game I can play on my little cell phone or whatever um but it it it, it taught me so much and it it showed me so much about the industry as a whole and and an artist going into the music industry at such a young age you know it I so much and I've I've got friends from that time still um some of the people that were major parts of the show I've kept in touch with so it's it's been a huge part of my life and my career for sure yeah, and I was going to say, like, there's teamwork involved, too, because, like, they make you all, like, choose a group, and I don't know if, like, you actually choose a group or if they, like, help you choose, but, mm -hmm. I mean, it you have to, like, figure out how to work with the team, and that's Definitely. part of the experience, too. You have, like, duets and stuff, too. Definitely. It's, it's so interesting because my group, we were all 15, and... <laughs> it was such like a big deal on that episode and um, at first I was going to be in a different group a lot of people don't know that they had the 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 group of kids that I joined they had already started their group and they knew who they were going to do and we found out we had to have five members for every group and they were like wait you guys remember that guy he was like if y'all need someone and lo and behold I got into the group. All of us were 15 and 16 years old. They heard us on the episode with 22 million people watching and it changed all of our lives forever. Yeah, I mean, and I feel like that was like the peak of American Idol kind of too, <laughs> when, when you auditioned and yeah. when you were on the show. So yes. do you like pay attention to the view counts every week? <sighs> You know, not really. At the time, you know, we had found out that that many people watched the live, um, like the the, the live, uh, uh, what's the word you say, broadcast for that yeah. night. Um, but, you know, years on down the line, I'm sure people have forgotten. It. So many others have come since then, you know. So um, it can be kind of tough to keep up with. But, you know, those memories all definitely hold forever. Yeah, I mean, I still remember 
maybe I just have a good memory, but I still remember like a ton of American Idol stuff from back oh. in the from back in the day, and I'm just like, yeah, definitely. And, there have been moments on the show that have you know shaped what our modern day culture is now, even so, you know, even social media as well. So um, it's you know American Idol. Is it'll be around forever, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it will be. So you grew up in Memphis. Did, it, it, was it easy to find places to perform around Memphis? What was the like entertainment scene like and theater scene like in Memphis? Deb, I, I definitely think that uh, when it when it comes to the 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 music side of things. And, and knowing sort of like the rich musical history of Memphis and how that one has created so much opportunity for uh, artists and natives that are there. Um, I would say it wasn't easy, but it was, it was very accessible for me. Um, and I'm in a family of musicians. I have many musician friends of my family. So it's, and music has always been a part of my life. So um, getting involved was never hard. I think the, the challenge was um, knowing how to go beyond Memphis and, and go beyond where I was from and to really expand my wings. Um, and because of the opportunities that I was met with in my hometown, it has allowed to, you know, branch out and experience new things and new places. And, you know, even when it comes to theater, um, it's, it's not uh, uh, major in Memphis, but people in Memphis love theater. And um, I, it's, it's really exciting because, you know, the show that I am now goes to Memphis next March, and it would be the first time I would perform at the Orpheum Theater um, for the whole entire city to come and see. And they all know idols. So, you know, yeah. it is it, it really is sort of like um, a homecoming, but also very full circle because that's where my foundation is. And I wouldn't have gotten to this point without the accessibility of performing and and performing at Graceland where Elvis's house is and Peabody Hotel and all these incredible places so that's so cool so you grew up like around like iconic places and you're you're like yeah I visited there a bunch that's yeah. that's like my home city it's <laughs> casual <laughs> it's cool so right. <laughs> I mean that is very full circle getting to perform at a at a theater where you probably like grew up going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it and and to know the the greats and the legends and the icons that have also performed there, I think very special as well. And um, you know, I, I don't take it for granted and I I really try to um, put forth effort daily into cherishing all of these great moments and, you know, memories that I hope, you know, inspire other people. You know, it, it doesn't just end with me, so. Yes. So what would you say to people like from cities where maybe theater isn't as big as like places mm -hmm. on the East Coast, like New York and maybe, I'm gonna say Boston because I feel like it's mm -hmm. kind of big in Boston too. Definitely. What would you say to them if they like want to get involved in musical theater, but don't live somewhere where theater is as big? Right, right. Um, my advice would be to really do some research and and really understand um, what it takes to be a theater performer. Um, on Broadway, you do eight shows a week and on a six day schedule. And um, also learning, you know, what what rehearsal is like. What is the process like to learn certain roles, and and what sorts of um, uh, vocabulary you should have as an actor and a dancer and a singer? Because you know, in on theater, being a triple threat is like the golden ticket. So um, I would say to definitely do some research and and look into. Um, programs that are available to you locally, you know, if there is like a smaller house near you or, or in your region, those are definitely great places to start. Um, and then also 
you know, seeing what agencies are out there and, 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 and what interest you could spark from just, you know, putting yourself out there and, and seeing what you come up, come up with. I think there's a list of things you could do, but I think for a person really starting out, you know, having those, 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 um, those essential questions answered to how to be successful is very important. So, you know, knowing what it's going to take, knowing what type of work you're going to do. Do you want to go to university to learn more or do you think you can do it on your own? I think those are all the, the sorts of places to start when it comes to making decisions and being in theater specifically. <laughs> Yes. And I mean, there's no path that's like a straight line. No one's journey is the same. No one's journey is the same. And I really believe that's what's so beautiful because, you know, I have friends who went to college and they booked the show right after college and they've got an MFA, they've got a BFA in theater. Myself, I started on television. And when I left high school, I had joined uh, Disney's The Lion King right after. So, you know, it really is different for everyone and everyone's journey is different. And I think that's what's so encouraging because it doesn't have to be done one way, you know? Yes, that's a perfect segue to get into The Lion King. Oh, awesome. It, yes. So growing up, like, I feel like that, I feel like The Lion King is a staple for every child. Like every parent is like, here, like what? this is going to be like the first movie we're going to show our child what right. is it like stepping in to a show like disney's the lion king after watching it growing up like being a fan growing up and what would what would little you have said if he had known that that was going to happen i my little me would have been like you're lying get away i don't believe <laughs> um but to, to have been able to be a part of such a ginormous cultural phenomena is like one of the greatest honors of my life. And I did it at such a young age. So part of me, um, you know, I, I think my experience in full uh, was just, it, it happened so fast because I was so young and, and my attention, it just, it's like a million things happening at one time and I couldn't really like wrap my head around it all at first. Um, but I, I it, it totally changed my life forever. Um, and to know that, you know, this is something I've seen growing up my whole life. I know all the songs, like it, it is, it, it's the epitome of a dream come true. Um, and, and, and a lot of people don't know, like Lion King really, I mean, they know, but they don't know, you know, Lion King really is, the most major you could get is the highest selling entertainment event of all time. Yeah. Every story combined still has not sold as much as the Lion King. So it, 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 I, I, I count it a huge blessing that I was chosen to be a part of such an incredible production that's been around my entire life okay. since I was born. <laughs> Yeah, because it was like the first show my my grandmother ever took me to, and uh, I live in I live in Dallas, and I remember going to like the theater for the first time with her and going to see The Lion King at like probably yeah. eight <laughs> yes, loved that way too. Yeah. yeah, so you understudied Simba in the show. Did you know going into the audition that you were going in for an understudy for Simba? I did. Um, my very first audition. Um, I auditioned in Atlanta and it was to, I was auditioning to be Simba, um, but I didn't know all of the specifics behind what they were looking for in casting at the time. And so at the first audition, they were like, we'll call you in a couple of months. They called me literally in a couple of months and they had an opening for a replacement on Broadway and then an understudy on tour. Ooh. Mind you, I'm 20 years old at the time, never done a Broadway production, you know, just totally like, this is, I, this is way out of my league. <laughs> um, and when they called me, I auditioned in New York over the span of like three or four days. And then the day of that, that final audition, the cast director called my agent and was like, so we're gonna give him the role. Seven days home with my family in Memphis. And then I was on tour in my first city in rehearsals. And I started out understudying. And then by the end of my contract, I was the principal. So it was a great experience. 
wow that's i mean that's so cool to start like to really get the opportunity for growth within that role and to be like to have the trust behind you too sure i it really taught me what being a broadway performer really is especially starting out as an understudy and doing some internal swing work as well like learning other parts as well so um to do that first and then get to the point of you know being the principal being the main guy like it i had so, so much perspective because of the fact that i was an understudy and i had to be ready at all times no matter what could happen possibly so yep because some is a very important role in that show for spoiler alert. <laughs> yes um so did you learn puppetry during that time and how long did like what was that experience like how long did it take what was the your process for learning puppetry because i know it's not easy oh definitely it's, it's so specific all, all of the uh creative and artistic facets of the show are are so specific and it does take time to learn even the movement like it's balinese style movement as well and that was something i had never seen before um and working with puppetry was definitely nothing i've ever done in my life so um it, it was it was very interesting it was a new challenge um i rehearsed four weeks with the puppets to to it, it took me a month to to learn how to use it properly. And it took me even more time to like master it. Um, so it, it was, and, and it's, 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 it's just, it's so much fun knowing that like, wow, like this has been around this long and it still looks this cool. And it's, right. it, it, it looks so real, but it's, it's such a beautiful uh, and spectacle way of sharing the story. It, it was so genius. And I think Julie Tamar, the director, she just, she's such a gift and, and so special. And, and what she created is just, it's, it's legendary. It's gonna last this, the, this, the, the tales of time, as people say. Yes. And I mean, it must be so cool to like, as you're, as you're like holding the puppets to hear the audience reactions and especially the children's reactions in the audience. Yes, you, you, you can feel how inspired people are when they come and when they go in that show it's 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 so beautiful and it brings everyone together you know like it really does bridge the gap culturally for us all and story about animals how who knew you know <laughs> yes with great music and right. great music great story great everything it's a win-win you know yes so how did you make the character of simba your own when you were an understudy versus when you got bumped up to the lead? I, I, I tried to do uh, diligent work in, in studying and watching those who were before me. So, you know, Simbas that have performed in the past and uh, the, the principles that I was working under at the time and, and the other standby actors and seeing what they do and incorporate it was sort of like the foundation of what I wanted to bring to it. And I really made it my own um, by applying uh, my own life at the time. You know, I was 20 years old, kind of fresh out of school um, and, 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 and living this adult life without my family on the road, you know, it was, it was so interesting. And I'm doing the show where, you know, I'm, I'm this 18 year old kid who has fleed from home because, you know, he got pushed out and his uncle made him guilty and he never wanted to come back again. And he, he felt like he couldn't, um, he couldn't fill the shoes of his father. And there were so many personal things in my life that that I was able to uh, take and and apply, and that's what really made it my own. Because you know my my coworkers, they're like thirty and twenty nine and thirty five playing an eighteen year old, which is amazingly incredible to see as well. And I was able to learn so much from them as well. But it it was real life for me, you know. So yeah, they were like, "Wow, you're young, you're so young." <laughs> oh my god a baby every day i think every day every I single was, day i was gonna say i bet they all were like oh my gosh you are <laughs> you are a baby <laughs> yeah. 
they were probably like watching after you during the whole tour. <laughs> For sure. And it, it was just, it was funny because it's just, it was almost like I was living in my own reality, playing this role. And seemingly that seems to be a common sort of, you know, thing that happens in my career. I, I really, it really doesn't take much for me to um, put myself in those shoes and, and really try to bring the story to life through, through that lens or that perspective or that person's eyes. Yes. I, I love that answer because it sounds like you could like find a way to relate to Simba, which is yep. really cool. Definitely, definitely. So why do you think The Lion King is the longest running Disney show on Broadway? I believe that it's the longest running show because of the story. And, and I think, you know, the music and the the um the creative aspect of the show from the wardrobe to the choreography to the the lighting design the set design every piece of the show is so finely uh tuned and refined and polished and so done so well that i think when people see it they can't believe that they're seeing it so it makes them want to see it again and again and again and it's a story that we all know and love and cherish and has shaped American culture. You know, there are, there are so many other Broadway shows, I believe personally, that sort of follow the story of The Lion King. And The Lion King sort of follows, you know, old stories that were told, you know, you could, you could say biblically, you could say, you know, from old um, native stories we've heard, you know, it's, yeah. it's really and I think um, the writers and the directors, they were able to put a story that we all can see ourselves in and relate to and make it into this spectacle that no one has ever seen before. And I believe that's the truth as to why it's, it's lasted so long. You know, everybody can relate to it. Everybody can see themselves in it. And even if they couldn't, I think the message is so strong and music is so strong that it affects us all in the deepest way possible. And I think I think that's why it's been around for 29 years or however long it's been now. <laughs> so long. And I mean, it ages beautifully too. Like it's so, like, it's so, you see it and you're like, was it like, did they add new things this year? Right. I mean, I'm sure they, I don't know how much they change it every year or if they keep mm -hmm. changing it or they leave it the same. I'm sure they have to update props and stuff, but like it ages well. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I, I think the creatives on the show and all of the associates, they, they understand what it is to modernize and to continue to refine and, and to stay true to what the story is and uphold its integrity while being able to still offer something fresh and new. And I also think the last thing I would say about why I think it's been around so long is because it's a show for everybody. You know, like you can be 85 years old or you be three years old and go to that show and it'd be just as enjoyable as it is for everyone you know it it there there's there's no limit on to who can be present in the audience um every child loves the lion king um and i think it's so beautiful that families um see how important it is to go to a show like that and to expose their family and their children to theater as well. So it's it's all, it's it's like this ever evolving opportunity for people to see something so beautiful um, that they can share with their family. And there and as many people that have seen the show and as many tickets have been sold and as many millions and however billion dollars has been made the whole world has still not seen it. And the line is in about eight countries right now. So it just, it's, it's fascinating to know that. Yeah, it's in so many countries. Like, I think that they have the most tour companies out of probably any tour. I don't know. I'm, someone needs to fact check that for me. That might oh, no. be wrong, but. I confirm here that it is. <laughs> okay, okay. So I want to get in to your current tour, Ain't Too Proud, right. yes. which I mean, you mentioned earlier, you're in the city 
where the Temptations hold, uh, I mean, they're the most famous there. And they, were they, um, did they form there? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, okay, that's what I read. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be in Dallas in um, a month. Four, I believe, yeah, a month. Be there for two weeks. So I'm, I'm so excited about that. Yes. So and, uh, what was your audition process like for Ain't Too Proud? And what did you know about the story of The Temptations and Eddie Kendricks before auditioning for the show? Um, so the audition process was like very rigorous. It, it lasted around two years, including the pandemic. Um, and oh. I was casting and our directors and our producers a total of, I think, four or five times. It's, it's a little blurry, but... I auditioned many times um, and it wasn't because uh, I needed to keep auditioning that many times. They they wanted me to come in the room to see what it was like being with these other guys. Um, and, you know, the temptations have, have always been on my radar, you know, in my family from hearing other Motown music and, and, and listening to those iconic songs growing up. Um, and I didn't really know much about their story, but I knew their songs. So, you know, in our show, uh, the, the, the story is told from Otis Williams' perspective. He's the last living original Temptation. And they did indeed form here in Detroit. Um, he started the group uh, and they were, they, were, they were called Otis Williams and the Distance. And you know, them performing around Detroit, he ended up meeting Barry Gordon. And they, they formed a relationship and the group kind of changed. It was losing members and gaining new members. And by the time Eddie Kendricks had joined the group, they decided to name themselves The Temptations. And that's when Barry Gordy made them the superstars they are now. <laughs> yes, known to, known to, I feel like everyone. I, they are yeah, I feel like, I mean, I called my grandmother to be like, Hey, so do you want to go with me to the show to the show next next uh, month or I think it was in July, so in like two months. And she was like, "Oh, I know them." <laughs> yes, yes. It, it and 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 it's so amazing that you said that because you know we're performing the show for people who went to the actual Temptations concert back in the day, and they had the vinyl records and and all of that. So it's it's really amazing to see those people be in the audience watching us retell the story that they may know about or may not know about, you know, but they definitely yeah. know all. <laughs> yeah, definitely know all the songs, even if they don't know the story. So yes. for you, when you booked the role, what was the most fascinating thing that you learned about Eddie Kendricks and the story about the temptation? while researching and preparing for rehearsals? So many things I learned about Eddie Hendricks and just the group as a whole. But what I will say is so amazing. Um, now knowing the story and understanding how, you know, Eddie, Eddie was sort of like the malcontent. He liked to challenge ideas. And he never felt like the group was about one person. He felt like it was about everybody. And even though he could sing lead, he was he he took pride in knowing that all of them could sing lead and 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 singing with David Ruffman and Paul Williams and and these guys that had these distinct voices. Yeah. And that he himself was so distinct in the group. He was the high tenor, he was the crooner, he 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 had all this style. He would he would style the guys. He was a fashion guy. So um, a multitude of interesting things I learned. But the most interesting thing was it wasn't until uh, The Way You Do the Things You Do, which is one of the songs that he led. That was their first song that charted on Billboard. And I think it was in like the top 40 of like the pop songs back then. And then later on, they met Smokey Robinson and Smokey wrote My Girl. As we know, David sang lead on that and it became number one and that was their first number one song. So Eddie's voice is sort of responsible for the, the attention that they were getting back in the day. Um, and then uh, he, when he left the group, he is the only one of the Temptations that uh, 
had a solo career that went number one and he charted on the Billboard charts. He's the only temptation to do that on his own. So I was floored when I learned that. I was like, I have some big shoes to fill. Like, I, wow. <laughs> I, I got to really, you know, put forth my best because I think if, if that was able to happen, then the people that, that followed his career, that knew his journey, that found themselves to be fans of him, they also know that. So it, it, I, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't call it pressure, but I definitely feel a sense of responsibility when it comes to telling his story and, and you know, singing these iconic songs that he's going to be known forever for. I, speaking of that, how do you make the role your own while sticking to the true story? It, it really does take um, focus. It takes um, working with, you know, the, your fellow actors and understanding their their process and their perspective as well, because this is is where Lion King is different. Where you're you're portraying a fictional character. You know, this is someone that like walked the streets of Detroit and, and people knew this person and, could, and, and was tangible to other people. So um, it, it, it takes a, a certain type of focus and, and, and understanding how important it is to, to portray a true story um, and, and, and a, a host of research and, and reading and, and, and really like uh, watching every video I could and every interview that I could and, and sometimes reaching out to family members who are willing to, you know, speak to us actors and give us some insight into, you know, what their experience was like watching their family member go through that. So. Wow. Did you, re did you reach out to like any family members in particular who helped, who helped you out? I myself didn't. Um, I know that there are some people that were able to get in touch. I was not able to get in touch with Eddie's family. However, I learned from um, one of our stage managers that uh, his family came to see the show in Cleveland uh, last month or so, last month. About. So that was like, oh my God, I, I can only imagine how they felt or much they must to the thought, but it seemed like, you know, the audience, they always go crazy at the end. So I'm hoping that they, you know, felt that that moment and that performance was special. And, and I hope they saw something really beautiful. Is that the thing they tell you after the performance that like, hey, like the family member of this person came. So you're not like thinking about it the whole show. Sometimes they do. I think sometimes, uh, <laughs> I think it depends on who the actor is and who they're playing. Um, and our team, they know I'm, I'm, I'm so goofy and, you know, I love to like know things like that. Um, but for others, you know, it might be a little different. Like uh, there were some family members of Dennis Edwards that came to the show and our Dennis, he, he may have dealt with it a little different than I would have, and they told him after the show, and it was it was awesome. So you know, it, it just depends. But for me, I I enjoy it because it's it's just fun knowing, it's exciting to know that oh my god, these are important people in the audience, and and they're here to support us, and that's the best part about it. You know, a lot of people might think like, oh, they're coming to see if y'all are good or not, but I I really believe it's more about a support and and them coming to support what it is that we're doing and telling their story, so. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're coming to enjoy live theater and talented performers too. Definitely, they, they, they're coming to see a show and, and to be entertained. So um, I, I, I understand the duty as an artist first, and that's why, you know, it, it's enjoyable for me to know, you know, who's in the audience that night. Yes, do you have a favorite to uh, Temptation song and do you have a song that you didn't realize was by them that you figured out was by them like a wall in rehearsal for the show oh I have so many favorites um it's so hard to say which one is my favorite but I really do love I wish it would rain um because of the moment in the show and, and what's happening on stage. I don't want to spoil too much, but we, we kind of highlight 
the civil rights era during that song and you'll see some very familiar faces um, on the screens behind us. And it, it really is just, it, it's the most vulnerable part of our show. Um, and because you see these five men expressing emotion during an era where it wasn't really okay for men to be emotional um, is really amazing. And to hear the lyrics, you know, I know a man isn't supposed to cry, but sometimes I gotta cry to ease the pain, you know? Like that, it, it really is so Love touching. <laughs> yeah. it, it grounds you in a way uh, back to earth, you know? Um, and who knew that they would have a song so beautiful that could change the mind of how a man thinks of himself when it comes to sharing emotion and allowing yourself to cry. Um, and then also a song I didn't realize, um, uh, I, and I'm, I'm totally not sure still, and I'm in the show, who the writer is, but we do feature uh, If You Don't Know Be My Now, which is like a very popular R&B song. So many other artists have done it, and I think that's why it can be a little hard to know, like, whose song was it first? And, and I think it does belong to the Temptations. And so when I learned that, I was like, wow, like this is one of the most iconic R&B melodies of all time. And, and in person when I found out we were doing it, I was like, oh, I gotta find the tape so I can sing it just like Eddie, cause it's so good. I love that song so much. And of course, Imagination, I sing it every night. It's one of my favorite Temptation songs ever. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's everything you want in a song. It's from the strings to the violin, to the horn section. It, and, 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 and the, the power ballad vocals from all the other, it, it really is just so beautiful. What's it like, do you like hear you all singing together, like how the harmonies work out and how like you all sound together every night? Are you able to hear that while on stage? Most times for sure. Like, you know, it performing in theater is so different from like commercial performing or performing on the stage where you have monitors and ear that, that you can hear all of the sound. Um, and in live theater is so different because we're portraying real life. So it can't, the visual aspect can't seem as though it's on stage. So at times in reality, it can be a struggle to hear each other because it's theater, but then also it's like, I can look at them and, and see them on stage and also hear them because we've done it so much together. And, and essentially, yes, we can hear each other. Um, and, and, and through what we are able to hear is how we're able to feel each other as well, even if we're on opposite ends of the stage. I was gonna say there must be like, like you must get like goosebumps just like listening to each other, like listening to how you all sound together every night. Yes, we, we have to like keep ourselves um, at bay and and stay focused that we're on stage because it's like you hear someone sing something and you're just like ooh or you or just catch it and you're like ooh I'm not in the audience I'm on stage I gotta keep doing the choreography yeah. <laughs> but, you're like dang it I can't cheer <laughs> yeah yeah but it, it does happen and we we find ourselves still doing that and I think it's it really is interesting and and definitely really cool because I'm sure the guy the original temptations they did that back in the day on stage too they would hear each other and be like sing man or like you know just just rocking out together so we do find ourselves doing that quite a bit on stage where we try to behave so we don't get in trouble <laughs> I mean, I feel like that strengthens the chemist, the like chemistry that's supposed to be seen on stage when you're like actually fans of each other. It, it does. And I think it does also translate to the audience as well. They can see the chemistry. They can see the relationships beyond what, what we're portraying on stage. I think they can see our actual rapport with each other and they can feel it too. So it's, 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 it's such an incredible experience to have every day and I've become so attached so anytime somebody's like gone or they leave I'm so sad I mean yes I could imagine do yeah. have you gotten to perform with like all the understudies and swings at this point definitely yes yes most certainly and and what is what is so incredible is to like see 
the the excitement from the swings and the understudies to get on stage with us because it, it is sort of like a fraternity in, in a way um because it's such a male dominated cast <clears throat> and we feature the female characters as well um but it does feel like a brotherhood type of thing because we've gone through so much you know the rehearsal process is so rigorous um the show is non-stop dancing yeah. and on the <laughs> or for best choreography. So I, I'm sure that gives an idea of how intense it, it can be. And I think that also adds to um, just, just the, the weight and the importance of our relationships together, knowing that we've gone through this process together to become temptations. So it's, it's so much fun doing it with not only the principal cast, but the understudies and swings as well. I mean, and I have to talk about the dancing. Like, speaking of that, how do you keep up the stamina to sing and dance on stage eight Listen, times a week? I'm I'm gonna have my sister email either Red Bull or Celsius because I, I at this point it's like I gotta find the energy from somewhere sometimes like my body can be so tired it's like let me just get a sponsorship from an energy drink company and we'll just call it a day <laughs> but then also like you know this this opportunity and and what it means for me and my culture my background my history my ancestors you know I, I who I don't think anyone in my lineage of family would you could tell them I would be doing this right now and and they would fully believe that it could happen and especially in a time where I'm 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 portraying an era that they lived in you know and they they know what that was like they know what Jim Crow and segregation and all of that was like so to be able to be doing that I'm sure is like not only a dream come true for me but my ancestors as well so it's it's just so important uh what we're doing and sort of like I said earlier you know I just I feel such a great responsibility with it as well to to not only do well and to do my best but you know to also um, lay a foundation for those coming after me, just like it was laid for me when I started out, so. Is breath control like something you have to figure out when dancing and singing at the same time, kind of? For sure, it, it is It is something that you have to condition your body for. And, and I think uh, certain roles require certain different conditioning. And with this one in particular, like it's, it's a lot of cardio. I lost a ton of weight from when we started last year. Um, and the style of dance is, um, it's, it's got some hip hop, it's got some jazz, um, and it also highlights the signature Temptations moves as well. And, and uh, our associate choreographer, Edgar Godino, he uh, danced with Michael Jackson for a very long time. So some of our choreo has a Jackson-esque type of flair to it, which is something that I'm kind of more familiar with when it comes to that style of dance um, and just the dance teachers that I had and sort of what they did in their career. My dance teacher performed Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson as well. So it, it's almost kind of like, I, I was like, it was more natural for me to sort of learn the style, but my body was not conditioned for it at all. Being falsetto, high tempos, and dancing at the same time was definitely something very new for me too. Um, and it just took time to condition my body to do it. And I'm just so thankful that I had all the help and resources I could get to be able to do it. The way that Janet Jackson uh, or like mentioned was so casual. I was like, ah. oh my gosh, what? <laughs> Yes, my, my uh, dance teacher, his name's Eric Henderson, my first dance teacher, and he took me pretty late. I was about, it was around that time I was doing Idol when I was like 14, 15, 16, when I was really expanding my, my language as a dancer. And um, he was a former dance captain for Janet Jackson. He did Captain EO with Michael Jackson, and he was a Memphis native as well. So. It was like I had the best of the best from the place that I was from, um, just because of, you know, being from Memphis, you know? So it, it really, it really prepared me for what I'm doing now. I really believe that. Yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna say, learn from the best of the best there, yeah. which is yeah. what 
I mean, what you said. So uh, why should people, whether they know the story of the Temptations or have just heard their music, why should people come see this show on the road? I think everyone should come see this show because they will see themselves in it. They will see someone they know in it. They, they know what, what, what success can lead to. And I think when you know what success can lead to it, 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 it sparks interest as to how does someone deal with such a great level of success and I also think that you know our, our show it, it's as fabulous as it is the story is so tragic and it is so it is so heartbreaking to see you know what happened at the peak of their career and um when when Paul passed away and when Dan passed away and when Eddie passed away and and literally Otis is the only one left I think because of how their story ended, I think it's a story for everybody. And, and they'll, they'll, they, they will learn something new about themselves. And, and that's something I'm starting to learn. There's so many things that I myself and my cast have learned about ourselves, but it's another thing to hear audience members come and say, you know, I went through something like that similar with my mom or my brother, and I never understood how to deal with it. And tonight I really saw like, wow, like this, I can walk away and feel better about something because I saw myself on stage or I, I feel better about a situation I'm going through because you guys showed me what they went through and now I can, I can go do what I need to do to fix this or work out a situation or just find something better for myself because they were inspired by God. So that would be the reason why I think everyone should come. And of course, because of the music and, and because of all of the other special things. And they'll get to see Diana Ross and Tammy Terrell and you know all of these other iconic Motown artists that, they, that might be their favorites as well. You know, Even if the Temps aren't your favorite, Diana Ross might be, so you'll get to see her too. I mean, and I love the reactions during jukebox musicals when like, I feel like everyone is there to like hear songs they're familiar with and stuff. But I love yeah. the reactions when like, they don't know a certain song is gonna be in the show. And they're like, oh, I love, and you like can hear like the collective, just like, I'm so excited about this song yeah. being in the show. That's my favorite is hearing everybody sing along you know it just it 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 makes our job so easy <laughs> you're like thank you thank you here sing <laughs> once you want yes so what has been your favorite part about being in detroit thus far oh my gosh um the people and the food for sure <laughs> The food here in Detroit and the people are just so amazing. It's such a diverse city, and you know, Detroit is 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 one of those cities. It's it's so iconic, and and it's it's always been on the map. And you know, the 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 um sort of what is the word I'm looking for? Like the impression that Detroit has left on American history is just so so great. And and just like many other major cities it's had its struggles and ups and downs but it, it's really so amazing to see like what the city has grown into and and how the people here love this city and they love their city and they really claim it as theirs and you really feel a sense of community and family even from people that you don't know it really seems like the city is so involved and, and they know that they're like the bomb.com here. So it, 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 it really is the energy here is, is so rich and I just, I love it so much. I, I really do, I'm not just saying it. I mean, and I bet for this show, like I would love to be in a room and see, in like the room and see this show in particular in Detroit, because I felt like that energy is just like a whole other level. It's, 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 it's no comparison. I, I, every city we've gone, you know, these audiences have been just so loud and, and, and just, it's like they're seeing their idols on stage kind of, but being, it's, it's somewhat the same, but also with an understanding that the people in the audience know the history. So they come with a different eye and a different ear. Um, yeah. and so much much fun. I never in a million years would I have expected or thought that I would get to do something like this. It's it's so specific. It's so special. 
so special too. Yes. So and you special. get to have this memory forever now. Forever. You know, I have tons of pictures with these icons and legends that have stood the test of times and have 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 had careers last six and seven decades you know that is that is a couple of lifetimes and to still be so recognizable like i feel like a celebrity being here everybody i'm walking down the street i'm like eddie eddie and i'm like oh my god like this is this is insane i i never thought i'd be walking on the street and someone would not call me my name but call me by the name of playing that's that's one of the greatest honors I think you can have as an actor and to come to somewhere like Detroit and to be received so well and people really enjoy the show knowing that they're going to be critical has been just so amazing everybody has just welcomed us with open arms and they've been celebrating what we've been doing so it's it's been amazing yes well I have to say before I move on from me too proud that I've heard wonderful things about the show and Great. When, I mean, I have a friend who, when it closed on Broadway, they were like, what? Like, this shouldn't, this shouldn't close on Broadway. This should stay open. Definitely. I can't believe it's closing. And I was like, I, he's hyped it up so much. And I'm like, I cannot wait to see this on tour. So good. It's so good. And and shout out to our Broadway family. They, they, <sighs> they are the, the, the champions of what we are doing. And, and we totally stand on their shoulders and everything that they've done for us. So I'm, I'm so thankful to just be in the number as they say. Aw, well, <laughs> I'm sure they're like beaming with pride watching this tour cast. Definitely, they, I've, I have a few personal relationships with some of the Broadway cast and um, Jelani Remy, who was the last Eddie on um, Broadway, as you may know, is Simba on Broadway and yeah. has, for a long time so he and I are are just we, we definitely are family and and because I'm younger than him I feel like I've been following into his footsteps sort of so um, it runs deep for us as a as a whole you know the Broadway cast and the touring cast we really are a family and and, and 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 I'm so thankful for that I don't take that for granted at all I love that so much theater is like one big happy family and it's so it's, it is all world too y'all know each other so it is <laughs> Gotta it's, love. yeah it's a yeah. small world small so world. i'm curious if you could create any jukebox musical about anyone's life whose life would it be about mm -hmm. you know it's so interesting michael jackson now has a new musical mj the musical yes um i believe wholeheartedly and i hope that it happens soon i don't know who is gonna do it i don't know when it's coming but i would love to see a musical about prince rogers Ooh. now and i think that it would be so amazing to see because purple rain the film and the album is another american cultural phenomena and and um you know, we were just performing in Minneapolis and that's my second time performing there. And and to, to visit a city that I feel was once just so like, so full of life and so vibrant, you know, so many things have happened there, you know, with George Floyd and um, even the pandemic, it's, 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 you can see that it's been hard for the city to sort of come back after, after those that time and and what happened there and so and to know that that's where Prince is from and and you'll you'll walk down the street and see a mural of Prince on a twenty foot building you know is it, it really is just like wow like this city wouldn't be this city without Prince and and that city would never be that city without his music and and his music is so powerful and it and it. it as well, even through his passing and and no longer being with us, has still stood the test of time and is still so relevant. You know, I'm always seeing people wearing a Purple Rain t-shirt or you can go to Target or Walmart and get a Purple Rain t-shirt. Like it's, you know, just going to Krispy Kreme to get donuts. You know, it really is, it really is um, a staple in American culture and, and American music. So I, I would love to see a show about Prince and I think, the rest of the world should see it as well. And I think I think it would be interesting to watch his story too, you know. 
I'm surprised that hasn't been done yet, actually. I wonder if there's like anyone it like working on one. It has to be in talks because the it's been it's been so long since the movie came out. And I think there is sort of this resurgence of like um the the Broadway world sort of paying homage to um the icons of our culture, like Tina Turner, who has yeah. a show. Michael Jackson and The Temptations and, you know, all of these incredible artists. And I think you know, they've, they've done a show about Whitney Houston as well. Um, and, and I think it's just time, you know, it's time for us to know what was Prince really going through and, and, and what really happened when he made these songs. And, and it would be interesting to see who's in the show. Like I'm sure Sheila E would be in that show. Uh, 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 Quincy Jones, a host of people you know, that would also be featured in that show. I would love to see that. You're like, I've cast it already. It's okay. Yeah. Like, I've got it. Definitely. I know who I want to direct and do wardrobe and everything. I, I got it planned out all in my head. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, just come to me. It's fine. We can we can start making it. it, it right. It'll open next month. <laughs> all the answers. <laughs> yes. I mean, that, it needs to happen soon. That's yes. a good one. We're going to find our fingers. <laughs> yes, manifesting, manifesting. Right. So how do you work on self-confidence in an industry? I mean, as where you have, you go in for auditions, you never know how long these auditions are going to last. You don't know if you're going to get told yes or no. Like, um, I, you know, I think it's so important to have a group of people around you or even one person that can be there to help keep you grounded because it is an industry that is so, um, it can seem as though it's focused on uh, the outside and um, things that you, you necessarily can't change about yourself, but you hope that it can work for what uh, a team might be looking for or what a director might be looking for. And one, one thing that I do for my self-confidence, my self-confidence knowing that is, you know, keeping um, the people closest to me around me uh, in, in the most special way that I can, whether it's, you know, scheduled weekly calls or me taking time to go visit a family member or um, making sure that I, when I'm going through something that I call them and talk to them because they'll bring me back to earth and, and help me sort of um, see the best parts of myself because they've seen it. And, and that sort of helps me stay confident. And, and to any young artist, out there, I would say, you know, it's so important to have that around you, whether it's a mentor or your best friend from school or even siblings or your parents, it's so important to have that. And, and if you don't have that, you know, putting yourself out there to find that is important too, you know, and, and, and seeking people that can, can keep you at bay and, and just remind you every day that you are great, no matter who may say that they think that you're not, that you, you still are and everything that you have is so beautiful. This experience also has taught me so much. And one thing that uh, my cast, uh, uh, our director had said to us was, you have nothing to prove and everything to share. And I think that is so important um, to know in our industry because people will make it seem as though you have to prove it and, and if you can't if you, then you're not living up to it and that that's not the case it's all about what you bring and what makes you special yeah I mean and like casting directors and rooms are looking for the missing piece to their puzzle they like they want you to be that solution <laughs> Exactly, they want you to stand out and they want you to be yourself and they want you to bring something different that they have not seen because they see a lot of the same thing all of the time. And I think um, finding what is special about you, what is special about me, that's what I walk into the room with first. And, and then it also shows them that I have that confidence that I need to sort of get the job done. Yes. So before I wrap up and get to my last questions, I I looked you up on Spotify and you have some original songs on Spotify. I don't know. So I, do you are you currently songwriting? Do you always like songwrite on the road? Uh, what's the story there? 
Well, um, I will be honest uh, in answering this. Um, I, I don't get a chance to write often or as often as I should, but I think one thing everyone, including myself, can look forward to is more music coming out um, while I'm on this journey of being on the road, just because it, it has been such an incredible experience so far. And, you know, some of the cities that we're going to, like Dallas and Denver and Los Angeles at the end of the year and San Francisco, you know, there's so many places I'm going where sort of my roots are when it comes to the music industry and, and relationships that I have and people that I know. And I definitely don't want to lose sight of um, who I am as a musician and, and, and how I've been received as a musician from other people and them also wanting to hear what I've got going on, you know, what's going on inside of me and what words I have to share and what music I have to put it to. So I'm definitely working on it, but, but I also am totally just in love and, and, and fully, um, fully filled up by uh, this journey I'm on now as a temptation. And, and also all of the things that I'm taking from what they did and how I can apply it to my career as a musician and as a singer, you know, it's, it's one thing to be an actor portraying, but it's another thing to be an artist who is following in the footsteps of artists that came before us. So uh, we've got some things in the works, you know, I don't wanna spoil it. Uh, definitely um, uh, songs on Spotify. I, we are working on some things, but uh, the music that's out there now, it's, it's sort of, um, crossover genre between Spanglish and R&B. And I got to work with an incredible uh, production team on that. One of the producers being my actual brother, his name is Desmond Harris, who is now in the military. We thank you for your service, Des. Aww. And yes, um, I, yes, yes. And then our um, executive producer on, on that, on those, those, those songs, those projects, his name is Mac Woodward. And he's a, a producer out of Atlanta and he's worked with everyone. Uh, he won a Grammy award for working with Beyonce and uh, doing some engineering work for her on her um, I Am Sasha Fierce album. I think it was the song Ego is how he won his Grammy. So he he's literally the most amazing producer I've met. He has a heart of gold and I'm so thankful that I, I get to work with him on music and I'm certain we will be working together on future music too, so. Yes, I, I can't wait for that future music too. I mean, I, and, I, can't. <laughs> I mean, and everyone, I'm gonna post the link to where they can find you on Spotify in the description of the video, so. Fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course. So where can people follow you on social media to keep up with what you're doing? So I'm on Instagram at Jalen Universal. So it's my first name, J-A-L-E-N, and then Universal. And that's really where most of my content of what I'm doing and where I'm going that you'll see. Um, and then I have a YouTube as well, Jalen Harris Music, where you'll see some very old videos. Um, and then yeah. some some newer-ish things too, uh, but mostly you can find everything on me on Instagram at Jalen Universal. And I'm there might be a rumor out there that I'll have a TikTok soon. So oh. post it on that. If I do, it'll be at Jalen Universal too. Oh, you're gonna make all the cast TikTok and stuff. <laughs> Listen, they have been plenty enough without me. So they they are just fine. They're they're trying to convince me to come onto TikTok. So we'll we'll see what happens. That's ideas of some cool things we can do, so. They're like, come on, come on, just make a TikTok. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> just get there, that's all you gotta do. Then leave it to us, that's what they're saying. They probably so. already made one for you and they're just like, we'll give you the login when you decide. <laughs> it, some of some of my castmates follow, or follow me around with the camera. I'm like, this is gonna end up somewhere. I have no clue. So it, it probably have and I don't even know, so. <laughs> it probably has. Probably. So lastly, is there anything you want to promote or talk about that I didn't um, that I didn't get to? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, I think you you covered everything that that I would definitely love to share with everyone and to know. And and I think the way that you have um, 
so graciously asked these questions is, is so amazing and awesome. And I, I so appreciate that from you. And I just hope that, you know, from you taking time to do this with me, that people are, are, are interested in, and, and excited to come see this, this new show and, and to hear uh, this iconic and legendary music. And hopefully, you know, everybody uh, keeps up with me for what I have going next. And I think it's, I think uh, as, as we wrap this tour, I think um, the next opportunities are gonna be ones to follow as well and will be life-changing as well. So I'm, I'm so excited for the future and that's really what I wanna promote. I just, I wanna promote gratitude and thanking everybody that helped me get to this point and then also promote, you know, who knows what's next, but I, I'm excited to be a temptation along the way, so. All good things are next. Yes, so, only up from here, you know. All, all good things in, in your future. Well, it was such a pleasure talking to you and I'm so excited to see the tour next month. I've been like, I was gutted that it was, that it closed on Broadway. I and know. I'm, I but I'm like, hey, it's coming to Dallas so I get to see it. Yes, and yes. I'm definitely going to go with my family to see it, so. Yeah. Looking Bring forward to it. Cousins, your nephews, your nieces, everybody, your aunties, uncles, they're all gonna love it. They're all gonna love it. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give me a five star rating. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.